Hello everybody, I'm Happy Caldwell and thank you for joining us for today's edition of Arkansas Live. We've had the pleasure of having Terry James here with us uh, this week and uh, we're going to have one more day with him. I encourage you to stay tuned, call somebody uh, maybe that does not believe in a rapture or doesn't know what's going on and why and so they can be edified uh, by the answers uh, that they may get while they're watching. Our topic has been The End Is Not Yet, and um, I want you to stay tuned. Arkansas Live starts right now. Uh, thank you, Terry, for being here again and, and spending these days uh, uh, with us, and I know our viewers are gleaning a lot from this. Uh, let's I want to follow up on some of the things we've already talked about, but I kind of emphasize something a little different. How do different interpretations of Bible prophecy, such as pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib rapture, how do they influence the understanding of current world events among Christians? Now, it, Make sure I'm asking the right question. In other words, if I'm a pre-trib believer, if I'm a mid-trib believer, if I'm a post-trib believer in the rapture, how does that affect my evaluation of what's going on in the world right now with the Israel war? Well, we look at those three positions, uh, the pre-trib, the mid-trib, and the post-trib, um, the pre-trib, of course, is, uh, is the um, position you and I hold. Yeah. That is that Jesus will, um, will call the church to himself. Uh, we believe that's what Paul taught in 1 Thessalonians chapter, uh, chapter 4, verses uh, 13 through 18, and through 1 Corinthians 15, verses basically 51 through 55. And I believe that's what Jesus himself talked about in John 14, 1 through 6. And that is that he will call all to the to himself in the clouds of glory before the uh, tribulation era begins. Now, the tribulation, of course, that last seven years, uh, Daniel's 70th week, right. Daniel talks about. And the last seven years is a terrible time of tribulation. Jesus said uh, the last half of that tribulation, that three and a half years, the last three and a half years will be the worst in all of uh, human history, particularly for the Jews. For Israel, now so we believe that Jesus will will call us to to Himself before that that terrible time because we're promised in Revelation chapter three verse ten that God has not called us for wrath but uh, to save us from that wrath the very hour of that temptation or that testing or that wrath. So the mid trib believes that there'll be a rapture somewhere in the middle, and they think that that may come maybe at the same time that uh, the two witnesses. Uh, who some believe were Elijah and Moses or who have been preaching to the whole world or lifted into heaven. And people think uh, maybe that's when the, the, the mid-trib rapture occurs, possibly. And some others have other, but it's just still during that seven years tribulation era. The post-trib is, uh, some people refer to it as a yo-yo type thing. Yeah. Uh, that the um, Jesus uh, calls all people, this is he's getting ready in Revelation chapter 9, 19 verse 11 to return from the clouds of glory come to earth and stop Armageddon and all that he will suddenly call the church up and then we will all join him and then return back with him and that's just simply not what God's word that would be a u-turn that would be a u-turn or something <laughs> the yo-yo effect or something and I don't mean to make fun of people but uh, but it is a ludicrous thing in my view to think that's the case so how that affects us is is um, Right now, we as pre-trib believers, we're told that uh, the gospel must go out to the whole world. And that is, I believe the pre-trib view is the best to preach the urgency of, of now, doing it now before the world goes into that tribulation period. Not only do we preempt somebody from losing their, their eternal soul and being separated forever from God, but we also, they will be kept from that hour of testing, that terrible time of tribulation. So the pre-trib view, uh, I believe, is most generally in compliance or, or compatible with Jesus' uh, great commission to go forth and tell the gospel. Yes. The mid-trib view, um, 
you know, they would say that they, they might say to a people still, we still have a chance to witness and this kind of thing, which is totally, uh, if, if you believe that, and if, if that doesn't happen, then you have missed a whole, a whole opportunity to witness to people and to assure them that they can be kept out of this, this era of uh, tribulation. And uh, that means that, you know, you can kind of put things off a little bit. And same with the, same with the post-trib, I think. And again, the, the last two, uh, those last two positions, uh, I've studied this stuff now for, well, I was saved at six and I knew it, and I learned about the pre-trib rapture at six years old, seven years old. Wow. So I get it. I'm 81 now, so <laughs> that I've been doing this a while. But, uh, of course, didn't really get into it to, to, to about 40 years ago, I guess. Um, yeah. And, uh, but to me, uh, the whole thing, I've studied every angle. I get emails weekly about people trying to change my mind on it. Debate, yeah. I've debated all over and many times about it. I just simply say it's no longer open for debate. Christ is going to rescue all of his believers. And it's not just a rescue, but it's, it's, it's just a promise. Yeah. Well, you know, if you put all of these things together in the puzzle, the way they fit, like you just discussed, the, the pre-trib rapture is the only thing that works to fulfill everything that's listed. I mean, it can't be mid-trib, it can't be post-trib. It doesn't fit uh, the the dialogue. It doesn't fit together the way it's supposed to. In Matthew 24, uh, 21, Jesus then said uh, to the, his Jewish disciples, then shall be great tribulation. And, and he, he says this tribulation comes after, um, yeah, you have to be careful how you read some of this stuff. You have to know the uh, dialogue and how it fits together. He says there'll be great tribulation. And, of course, then we know in Romans 11 all Israel will be saved, but they are also going to go through mm -hmm. the wrath, the judgment of God. And then in verse 29, he says, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. All these things that we've heard over the years about manifestations in the sky and the, and the sun and all that, that doesn't happen until after the tribulation. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and everybody will see him. Mm -hmm. Well, the rapture, you don't see him. It says we meet him in the air. Uh, we're caught up, and you have to be caught up to meet him in the air. Mm -hmm. uh, just like he was caught up uh, when he ascended into heaven. Okay, Here, here's, an, here's another one that I want to, to clarify. Um, regarding the timing of the rapture, which you've uh, already addressed, how do they impact religious beliefs and practices within the community and with Israel and the interpretation of Bible prophecy? We as believers are commended to watch for the approaching day. So how, how do we watch? Uh, the Bible says to look, to occupy, to work. So how do we watch? You can't, I'm just adding this, you can't watch certain things that happen on the earth because they are not related. It's not, it's not outward signs. How do we watch for this rapture? We can't watch CNN or even Fox or NBC, ABC, CBS. You can't watch the political. Uh, how, how do we watch? How are we supposed to be watching well, Jesus chided the, um, the Judaizers for not seeing, recognizing that he was among them when he first came, that, that their Messiah was among them. You can discern the, the skies and their redness and that it's going to be bad weather or whatever, but you can't discern the very time it's, um, uh, of the Messiah coming in, in visitation. I think it's the same thing, the same uh, basic uh, uh, thing with uh, with the believers now looking for something. It's a spiritual discernment based upon what we see happening around us, uh, and I believe that those uh, those things are becoming so manifest that, and that's why it's so important to 
understand Bible prophecy, to understand eschatology, the study of end time thing, from uh, from uh, the true biblical perspective, because uh, Jesus expects us to watch, to to look up when we see all these things begin to happen, and we begin to, we've seen them begin to come to happen for many many years now, but. Recently, it is with Israel um, more heavily involved in international geopolitical doings and, and war and everything else, where well, we can really see things come together. But think we watch for things like, um, for example, uh, we know that there's going to be a uh, one world order at some point. It's going to be an uh, antichrist regime. We can see mm -hmm. that happening with the World Economic Forum and all these other things developing. Uh, the, the, the globalists are trying to take over. They're trying to usurp not only the world, but particularly here in America, they're trying to usurp, uh, usurp the American system of election, for example, I believe. Right. And, uh, and so um, uh, we have the globalists coming. But one of the most important things, and I'd like to go into this in a little more detail whenever there's time, if we have time, is, is, um, is what we see happening with regard to Jesus' I believe most important prophecy. This is something we should be watching for. Uh, Jesus' most important prophecy in my opinion for this time right now is Luke uh, chapter 17 verses 28 through 30 in particular. Now we might go back and say 26 through 30 but it's the 26, uh, 28 through 30. It's uh, as it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man, yeah. when the Son of Man is revealed. Now, what, what's that like? Well, we look back at Lot's day, Sodom and Gomorrah, and we see um, Jesus said that, uh, that people will be buying, selling, they'll be uh, building, they'll be planting, doing all these things. And uh, he said it'd be just like that right up until the time that it's going to be just like then when Lot and his family, well, his two daughters mainly, were taken out to Zor, the city of Zor. Uh, then, just like that very day, judgment is going to begin to fall, that very day that the Son of Man is revealed. Well, the question is, are we in the days like Sodom and Gomorrah, like Sodom at this point? Like it was the days of Lot, that was the days of Sodom. Well, I think we are. Yeah. And I think we can look at all of these issues with regard to um, LBTQ and all this other stuff and see just how evil things have become, how things have been turned upside down, how this whole system, this whole movement is trying to usurp the very, uh, the very purpose, the very plans of God. For example, you can be a man or a woman, whichever you want. God says there's one, there's a man and there's a woman. And there's marriage, and you can be, but they, the world says, no, you can be anything you want. But what I think it really comes down to in my mind and heart, and I'm a grandpa type, an old, an old timer and a grandpa type, I love the children. And what the world, and America in particular, is trying to do to the children today with regard to this transsexual stuff, with regard to putting in front of uh, transvestites with the most vulgar and, and at, the, at the earliest age as possible, kindergarten and even younger, uh, to me, that is Sodom-like activity like none other. Are we in the days of, that's what I spoke on at the, at the, at the uh, Oklahoma City Conference with Prophecy Watchers, I, as it was in the days of Lot. Right. I believe we're right there right now. And, uh, and so uh, this, is, this is something that uh, shows me just how near we really are to Christ calling the church home as he did Lot and his daughters out of uh, out of Sodom at that time. I believe we're right there, and uh, that's why I believe it's so important to for the people, the church, to understand Bible prophecy at its in its essence and its in its most basic form, and particularly to understand the pre-tribulation rapture. I believe we're right there. And we're not we're not talking about um, a, a hating spirit. We're not talking about no. judgment. We're not talking about. Uh, the things that the world would say, well, you're judging, you're criticizing, whatever. No, we're talking about what the scripture says. And Jesus said, watch. Okay, in Genesis 6, God saw that the wickedness of man, I'm reading Genesis 6, 5, was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Now, I think we're there. There's probably a lot more that can be uh, exposed, but it says God was grieved 
in his heart. And these things are prevalent. Uh, Or Roberts used to explain it this way. He used a pyramid, and he said, when that pyramid uh, apex is out, when the evil and the righteousness become uh, diametrically opposed to each other, when evil peaks and righteousness peaks, speaking of the church, that's when Jesus is going to come. Okay. That's where the great separation takes place. Yeah. And, uh, and I believe that. Can I say one more thing? Yes, uh, sir. Um, and I believe that we are looking at America. I believe America, and you probably read this in some of my articles, I'm happy if you, if you have. I believe America is the apex nation of the world. There's no question about it. Materially speaking, we have been gaining more uh, material and even spiritually than any other nation on earth at this point, I believe. And uh, so I, I liken America in particularly, and I believe, I believe even, I really believe this. I believe Jesus may, when he gave that prophecy, he may have had this very nation in mind uh, as a nation uh, being Sodom-like at the time he next intervenes. And, 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 and I believe that in terms of the, the Genesis, I mean the, um, the uh, Luke uh, 17, verse 26. Now we're talking about 28 is about Lot. 26, verse 26 is about the days of uh, days of Noah. Noah, yeah. I believe that I believe that he was talking there about the entire world, and and the the kind of evil that we see, as you just ta- alluded to, uh, developing, particularly the violence. He said violence fell the whole earth, and this was this was one of the primary reasons. This probably was the primary reason that he. Uh, that he brought the total destruction of the world except for Noah and, and his eight family members. And I believe that Jesus was talking about in that Luke 26, the uh, entire world and the violence. It should be, just, be just like that at the time of his next appearing. And they'll still be building and buying and selling and all that. And, um, and I believe that America is perhaps the city or the locale to which he was referring. If a person would go to Lexington, Kentucky, and go through the ark. It's a life size, according to the scriptures, measured exactly what God told Noah to build the ark. It's three stories high, about three football fields long. They've done a magnificent job built by a Christian brother and his associates. And while you're on the ark, you get a picture of what it was like for Noah and his family. They have audio playing throughout the ark of what's going on outside the ark. The rain, the storms, the flood, and the motion of the boat going back and forth. They also have done a great job of giving you a visual perspective through giant screens of what's going on outside the ark while Noah and his family were inside the ark. Moral decay, um, idol worship, all kinds of immorality. Everything that it says here in the scriptures, they give you a visual so you can see yourself exactly what the world was like in that day. And boy, I tell you what, it is Mm eye-opening. And then they show you after the flood subsides, when all of the... Noah's family and the animals left the ark and it shows you how they begin to to build and and then God scattered the language etc so they couldn't so they wouldn't all just stay together they would go out and repopulate the earth but if if you're going to watch that was our question what does it mean to watch watch the spiritual condition it it's it's not so much now you you may have a different opinion it's not so much how the alignment of the stars takes place and uh, whether there's an eclipse or uh, all those things. It's the spiritual condition. The Bible says it grieved God in his heart. Yeah. And those, those kind of things, it's not, it's not hate speech. It's not any of those things. It's lining up with the scriptures. And, you know, I like what John Osteen used to say. Uh, if, if you rub the, the cat's fur the wrong way, let the cat turn around. <laughs> and that's what we have to do, folks. If 
if you don't like what's going on out there, don't judge and criticize. Look at the scripture, and you may need to change something. Mm. Um, I had a, a couple of more here, but I think I want to give folks an opportunity to get your material, uh, Terry. So here's the contact information on the screen for you to contact uh, Terry James and order his material, his books, uh, get on his uh, email or blog so you can um, get this material uh, regularly. RaptureReady.com is his uh, website. RaptureReady.com. That's pretty simple. RaptureReady.com. And then they'll have a contact address up there uh, for you. Uh, well, I think we might have uh, time for one more here. But thank you for expanding on that Luke 17. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, you you highlight this all the time. How does faith in Jesus Christ play a role in providing hope and assurance during times of uncertainty and conflict? Well, we're certainly in times of uncertainty mm-hmm. and conflict. But as Paul said, comfort one another comfort, yeah. with these words. And you said that that was something that gave you much peace when you begin to study prophecy and you saw all the things that were taking place. Just when you see the, what, um, here's another thing, <clears throat> the, what's taking place with the kids, you know, the children, the very youngest, yeah. starting with abortion. I, I mean, can you imagine literally how many now, 70 million children just in this country have been aborted? Yeah. That has got to tear at God's heart. It's my opinion and I believe he's shown me in my spirit that, you know, there's a lot of this controversy, particularly among the seminarians, of, uh, of whether or not uh, children in the rapture will be taken. Most of them say, or a lot of them say, that, you know, if, if one parent is saved, then a ch- child will go in the rapture. To me, that goes flies totally in the face of God's character. Right. It's one-on-one. It's, it's not corporate. God's salvation is not corporate. The rapture is closely uh, related to salvation. I mean, if you're not in Christ, you're not going. And so for God to leave any child behind, and I mean even one who has just been conceived, this goes beyond my, uh, my understanding of God's character. I believe that every child from conception on uh, will be taken in the rapture. The only children that are mentioned in the rapture are those who are nursing and those, uh, those women who are with child. Jesus talked about in the middle of the tribulation. Otherwise, there are no young children. And, uh, and the age of accountability brings, it comes into this. I personally believe there won't be a child left on this planet when Christ calls. Can you imagine the chaos that that alone is going to call, no matter what the rest of it? Uh, but if, if a mother is suddenly without a child that has been in her womb, uh, and that and beyond, uh, it's mind-boggling. You know, you may have said this yourself in one of your emails. Can you imagine what it's going to be like? Uh, The rapture takes place, and the mother gets up and goes to check on her baby early in the morning, and the baby's gone, and she doesn't know where it's gone and what's happened. That's what David Jeremiah, listen to him, he was doing his new book, um, and talking about the rapture, and he said, he said, he said the same thing. He said, "Yeah, the father's going to be out there swinging his child, his girl, his little girl, and the swing goes out, comes back, and the little girl's gone." He <laughs> yeah. said, "It's going to happen just like that." Yeah, and he believes that too, and and so that that gives me confidence too, because I know he is a, a strong uh, uh, believer in God's prophetic word. Um, I we have contact with Israelis living in Judea, Samaria. And they said that one of the most disturbing incidences that they saw and witnessed, the Israeli soldiers went in after the October 7th murder and mayhem, went into one of the kibbutz and to check out and see if there were any people left alive and whatever. And one of the soldiers opened the oven and there was a baby in the oven. Now, what does God think about that? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> well, you've you got to understand the mindset, the insanity of the Hamas. The satanic hatred. Yeah, it's, it's satanic, period. There's no 
recompense for that. Now, if they want to, you know, repent and get saved. Absolutely, and, I pray they do. Yeah, but that kind of behavior, uh, that's what he was talking about in Genesis when he said the, the intents and thoughts of their heart is only evil continually. Mm -hmm. But they're raised in that. They're raised in that uh, type of atmosphere. Okay, I want to give you uh, Terry James' contact information one more time. So be sure and uh, write this down or go online. Uh, RaptureReady.com RaptureReady.com And then, of course, there's other uh, email or website information uh, for you to uh, contact him if you uh, so desire. Oh, it's been a joy to have you here, Terry. Thank you so much you for too, coming. You too, brother. You I, too. I, I really appreciate, appreciate you inviting me. And I really look forward to uh, getting your emails uh, every every month and thank I, you. I just for whatever it's worth for your um, staff and everybody I take those emails and I print them out on my printer oh, so I can you. read them thank you because I like to read things over and over and over and I highlight uh, in yellow so I can read them and that's one way I have of watching to see what others are saying now others meaning people that I know and trust mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some people, I think, have been drinking Kool-Aid that they shouldn't be drinking. But <laughs> we wholeheartedly concur uh, with what uh, Terry is, is talking about. And while we're uh, talking about this, your brother is sitting right over there in the studio, Robin. My brother, yeah. He, he's yeah. faithful to bring me up here and uh, listen to me as I pontificate. And he's wondering, what in the world is this, this guy? I don't even know this guy. <laughs> well, that's the anointing uh, uh. But he, he and his wife, Charlene, have been uh, members of our church way, way, way back and served the community in Benton. And so we thank you and pray God's blessings on you and your entire family, and even your all your adopted kids and adopted yeah, and grandkids. I've got a lot of them, too. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Same to you in your family. Yes, amen. And thank you uh, for watching uh, Arkansas Alive. Uh, Arkansas Alive can be seen through live stream and Roku and uh, major transmission all over the, the world. So join me next time. Remember, Jesus is Lord of Arkansas and where you're watching too. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas 72221 or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com. Remember to follow VTN on Facebook at VTN Your Arkansas Christian Connection and follow Happy Caldwell on Twitter at Happy underscore Caldwell. VTN is on Roku. Search VTN in the channel store and add us to your lineup. Today's episode is available to watch on demand at VTNTV.com and click watch. You can also watch VTN via live stream at VTNTV.com.